Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay through the mic? I'm sure you can hear me anyway, but is it coming through on the mic? That's the main thing. So others who are joining us remotely can hear. Um, so thanks for coming to today's session, only this session between you and drinks. So uh, nice of you to come, particularly with the weather as it is. So um, this is a session around leading people in a time of complexity. And we've got two talks uh, in this session. Uh, later on, we'll be hearing about utilizing learning technologies to enhance conference organization and facilitation from Joseph Spink and Jamie Morris. But we're going to kick off with a talk called, Should We Be Doing That? Uh, it's enhancing digital education support through marginal gains. And here to talk about that is Leanne Fitton and Stephen Williams from Manchester Metropolitan University. So uh, thanks, everyone, and uh, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, you've already gone through the title there, so I won't read it again. Um, myself and Leanne are both senior digital education specialists, and we are part of the digital education team at Manchester Met, which is also part of the learning um i've forgotten the name of the wider team already learning enhancement educational development we're a new team um now what you can see on the screen there we do focus on leading on the pedagogical impact of technology and teaching learning and assessment uh, we've got some of our main themes and topics we cover within our sessions and our one-to-ones um, many that i'm sure you'll all be familiar with but you can see we're a, we're a large-scale university um we've got just under uh, 40,000 students, um, 2,300 staff. And we've got eight faculty specialists, two in each of our faculties that support staff. Um, we spread out our support for a variety of different areas. So we have our one-to-one -one sessions, we have our bespoke sessions, our faculty-based sessions, but we do also have our tickets, uh, which hopefully will provide a little bit of context for today's session. So when we was discussing the type of support that we was given, we was really interested in why people were accessing different types of support. So we did a bit of analysis on that and we looked at um, 1400 individuals almost and looked at whether they accessed tickets, so whether they sent tickets in, whether they did one-to-ones, so they booked appointments with us, or whether they attended training. So when we looked at that, we found that the people who attended training and logged tickets, only six and a half percent of of all of those people use both of those mechanisms of support. So most people were either doing training but then not logging tickets, or they were logging tickets but not really coming to training. And when we discussed that, we tried to think of why that might be, and it seemed to be that the tickets, which is, is quite a large proportion of what we do is the kind of first aid support someone somewhere has got a real issue they're having a problem their students are having an impact something's gone wrong and they want someone to help them sort it out so this piece of work is really to try and understand what's happening there to see whether we can prevent any of those first aid type of queries whether we can build the skills before that happens so that they're not having that stressful situation later down the line so with all the tickets that we've received over the past few years, it mainly started around March 2020, when we had a significant increase in the amount of queries we were receiving from those around the university. And I'm not going to point out why that may have been an increase at that time. But one of the things that we had with our previous system, which wasn't really a system, was everyone just got individual emails. It was very personal. You had a named contact. However, when using the ticketing system, it made it very transparent for us as a team, made it easy for us to be reactive to what was coming through. However, that did appear quite impersonal to the academic staff we were engaging with. The one main thing that really helped us and helped us with today's presentation is that it gave us that visibility of all those queries we were receiving that were previously just in people's email inboxes. Yeah, so we, we started playing around with what we could do with that data. So we was looking at how many queries came from each of the different departments and things like that to start with. And that helps us have more informed, informed decisions. Um, but we really wanted to get to the root of what was happening. What, what could we improve? Because it felt a bit like we was coming together and we were saying, oh, well, this has happened and this has happened. And we've got such a wide ranging um 
kind of portfolio of systems of processes that we support just to give you a number on that we've currently got 158 codes and that's been refined so that's 150 158 things that people have come to us and asked us about um so it really is very varied so it's quite difficult and complex to get to the the nub of what actually is happening so what we did was started kind of coding each of the queries that came in and we de developed this coding system. And what it meant was that we could really think about what we was getting queries about and when. And then from that, we could come up with interventions to deal with them. So sometimes it might be an issue that's a technical issue. Something's broken, something's not working. We'll see a sudden speak spike in queries around that. We have process issues where people are just not quite sure who, which team they should be going to or what's happening there. It could just be an awareness issue. And then it, the approach that we take to deal with that, what kind of intervention we put in place, it might be that we request some kind of technical development and having the data, how many people have asked this question, how many people have had this issue has been so valuable for making those business cases for those. Communications, not just what we're communicating, but when we're communicating, how we're communicating, we can really track, well, we did that communication and it worked. So that kind of thing is what we've been doing. And then we have an intervention. And this is an marginal gains approach. So we're just making tiny tweaks, but then monitoring the impact. But then overall, it's really helping to continually develop our service. So this is a bit overwhelming. So don't get too, too worried, but this is a big picture of what all of our kind of tickets are about. We've got seven main broad categories. You'll see that Moodle admin is our um, kind of most popular ticket query. Remember, these are the first aid kind of supports, the pedagogy supports, they're going to drop ins, they're speaking to their in faculty um, specialists. So they're happening elsewhere. But these staff access queries, we need to make that better so they're not having to have that issue at the start of year and go through that. Um, and then we've also got assessment, we've got questions about training, questions about video, how to use Moodle, and then other kind of technologies. You always have to have another section, don't you, somewhere? So yeah, as Leanne's uh, had on the previous slide, 42% of all the tickets we received were about Moodle admin, BLE access, staff wanting to get access to a particular area or they wanted to add someone to the area, similar for students, they should be enrolled into an area automatically. Now at the bottom of the screen there, over 99% over of enrollments were successful. Um, it's actually pretty much 99.9%. However, because there's so many enrollments going through the system, when we actually look at the queries we're getting, we're still getting about 1,700 queries coming to our team, asking us just an admin question of, I need access to, and taking us away from that real work of the pedagogical value of technology and embedding that in teaching, learning, and assessment. So just on the side of the screen here is part of the complex process that staff are getting stuck in, trying to find what they need to know to get someone into an area or get themselves added to that particular area. So after we analyzed this, we took an approach to try and improve the processes. So we had a look at our guidance and took a look at the tickets, the frequently asked questions that we were receiving and started to build that into something that was more concise for staff and easier for them to approach. So we've got our self-help tool, really quick and simple, just branching scenario. Staff can go online through the internet, click through the process, some simple questions. They ever get pointed towards a team that they might need to contact if a unit lead needs to be changed, or they actually get taken to a video guide that takes them through to a two minute process of what they can do to resolve their query. The other element was the system itself. The previous system was 12 years old. It was developed for only to be used for six months, but it did the job pretty well. So it was used for 12 years. Now it's being redeveloped, should be more intuitive for staff and hopefully will help remove some of those queries again. And to hopefully inform that these queries are going down, uh, the past two years worth of data, we can see that there is a drop. We do have the usual peaks at the start of year, start of semesters, as we would expect, a little bit around the recent marketing and assessment boycott, but we can see those areas dropping down and hopefully with the other initiatives, we can see them drop down further. Yeah, so we took a similar approach with lecture capture as well. So um, having the, being able to do the little thing and then see whether that works. 
we was able to track the change over, over time. And this is the lecture capture link. So we found that we had a bit of confusion with some of the terminology that was using around opting out um, and opting in. So people were getting a little bit confused and we was able to really do comms that were targeted at the right time. We worked with other teams. That was the title of our presentation is, should we be doing that? Well, some of these things isn't technically us, but we can fix it for people. So having that knowledge and going to that team and saying, we've got this issue, people are a little bit confused about this. Can we send comms at the point of the um, change being made in their data? So just some reflections. This was um, quite an investment in time to do this. I do think it's paid off because it's probably saved a lot of time overall for people where problems have just gone away that they hadn't even thought about, but it's because we've identified it and fixed it. Um, we do need to be flexible because of those those other teams and also we're trying to automate as much of this as possible it's, it is quite quite long-winded but we are trying to automate it um focus on the wins as well this is great for identifying issues but it's also great to say do you know that great training session that you did look at what's happened because we've had less queries on that that kind of topic afterwards um and then using the data to refine the process can be quite helpful here and um this is a mistaken email that got sent out and then a load of auto replies triggered the ticketing system and then we had to close them all down that was a really fun day so so yeah that, um, that was about yeah. a couple of hours work at the end of a day of me and Leanne <laughs> removing tickets that we'd created ourselves so we didn't need the system to tell us that but if it wasn't us that caused it we would have noticed something went significantly wrong in July yes. and we could have reacted to it and maybe put some comms in place for July next year, because we Don't know we've got a demand for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's our very whistle-stop tour of the work that we've been doing to try and improve the service that we offer. Um, and thank you for joining us at the long, uh, at the end of a long day, on a hot day as well. But um, yeah, any questions? <laughs> instructions to make sure that even the questioners are mic'd up so <laughs> if you wouldn't mind do you sometimes find that when you run a training course there is a spike in tickets relating to that specific topic area afterwards as people try and use it and get to a point where they've they've go right i'm now going on my capabilities i can't remember what the training course told me on this but yeah, um, yeah, it works both ways. So sometimes um, queries go away because we've we've kind of trained and then they know what to do, so they they don't need to do that. Sometimes um, we do get a spike in queries, particularly around a new technology that people might not be using. Um, we do have some tools that actually don't need. They, we don't really talk about them when we have these action planning meetings because they're just so easy to use and things like that the apps vbox padlet that kind of stuff we've we've always been like oh why are we not talking about that and it's because they're using the other support mechanisms and they're just so easy to use that they don't create a lot of work i think moodle the kind of things that we've spoken about today they've built up in complexity over time and um with these these other apps so we don't have that same level of complexity i don't think so yeah. I just think on the the app side of things where we've got that reduced number of tickets, we did have a slide on it, but we removed it because it was getting a little long. Um, but a lot of that, I think, comes from that element of choice. Um, staff are taking that responsibility with choosing something as part of their practice, whereas Moodle, the VLE, you've got to engage with that. You've got to provide that detail to students, um, whereas with the apps that they're able to go, I'm, I'm going to engage with that. I'm going to look into using that myself. Uh, and I think it just provides a little bit more that flexibility for staff. <laughs> just just to, to quickly add one last point, and um, just going back to your question, it's not that we want to re remove tickets. We don't we don't want to remove them completely. We just want to shift to doing things that are going to build people's skills rather than firefighting after something's gone wrong for them. OK, I think we've got time for one more question, if there is one. Hi, um, I was vaguely involved in something relatively similar in a previous institution. One of the big issues they had was getting staff to stop sending emails to people they know and use the ticketing system. How did you handle that? 
we I think we will still have that issue. Um, so when we first introduced the more kind of formal version of the ticketing system, uh, everyone had auto replies on their emails to say, if you're contacting me over this, you need to go through this system. And we were pretty strict on it just because of the amount that was coming through. I think that has stepped back a little bit. Um, but by looking at the tickets, we're still getting similar numbers coming through. Um, but hopefully they're improving in the types of things that were being asked. But I don't think we'll ever get rid of that. We do have other spaces like the teams um, spaces. So we've got teaching and learning community and teams with about 1,100 academic staff in. Um, but that's a peer-to-peer -peer network. So they, they kind of resolve each other's queries sometimes as well. I think it's just about being consistent and, and continually reinforcing the message as well, both with the team and with the academic colleagues who are requesting support. So if they if they do email you, obviously you reply nicely to them and they obviously have a question that they want. But then, by the way, did you know that you if you email this email address, it'll go through the whole team. And then if I'm off, then you'll be able to get the support quickly and just reminding them of the benefits of having that central um, communication point rather than the teams where if I'm off for two weeks and someone's emailed me directly they're not going to get a reply for two weeks and then they're going to be going round and um just making sure that we're we're consistent with it because if you if you if you go outside the box once then they'll come back to you and just they'll be upset if you don't do the same thing again um sometimes we just log the tickets for them and just say I've logged it for you next time if you could do do this but yeah it's, it's really tricky balancing giving good service and also managing how we keep all of these things in check. 